50% off. A Game Leap sub right now is 50% off using the code LOVE50. And I have a great story for you guys. Recently, I was talking to one of my friends who just bought his 10th Game Leap sub. And what he told me is that after buying his 10th sub, his life completely changed. He went from broke, absolutely no money into his bank account, no relationships, no skills, to an absolute mastermind. Not only is he making over seven figures per day, he has eight girlfriends and is on top of the world. So if you're looking for something similar, pick up your Game Leap sub right now. Link is in the description. All right, now let's get into the actual video. Uh, but yeah, guys, come on. I mean, what are you waiting for? Get your Game Leap sub. But yeah, right now, this video is going to be about the top five item builds to currently try in Dota. These are five heroes that I think are particularly strong. I've been following the pro scene, the pub scene, everything in between. Well, oh, that rhymed. I'm on fire, but so that I can bring you guys the best possible builds that you should try in your games right now to win. Let's get into it. So the first build I want to talk about is Shaker. Earth Shaker, I mentioned him in my position four tier list. So if you watch that, you're going to know, you know, generally what I'm going to talk about, but I'd like to give the build exactly like the exact item build you should go. So you're starting on it. So you want to go boots two clarities after that. You know, you're, you're going to run out of mana pretty quickly, assuming you're Fisher blocking the first wave twice, which you should be in like 90% of lanes from, from what I've seen. Sometimes you only can do it once, but it's besides the point. You're going to have to pick up more clarity. So typically during the laning stage, you're going to want two or three extra clarities on top of your two starting ones. Then you're going to rush right into the mana boots, following that up with blink and then into a shard. Now, why is this uh, the build you want to go? Why is it blink into shard now? What does this actually do? Well, the shard, it reduces cooldown by two, and it also makes it where anytime you cast a spell while they're fissured, aftershock will go off. On top of that, it reduces the cooldown by fissure by two seconds, which brings it, when it's maxed out, it brings it from 15 seconds to 13 seconds. After that, after you pick up your blink into shard, you're going to buy Aether Lens. This does a couple things. It increases the fissure range, which is good because you're buying your shard right? You really want to make Fisher as strong as possible. And then you're going to turn that Aether Lens into an Octarine, right? Aether Lens now upgrades into Octarine. And what does this do? It reduces the cooldown of Fisher and your Enchant Totem again, right? So it, it reduces Fisher by 25%, which is about, what, uh, 13 times 0.75. I'm not going to try to do the math, but it brings Fisher down to about a 10 second cooldown, which is extremely good, right? You can see why it's good. A 10 second cooldown, massive stun, that you could follow up with another aftershock it's brutal you can't team fight against it you just get kited to the ends of the earth on top of that echo is always there to follow up so you can get chain stunned for five seconds and if earthshaker doesn't want to put himself in danger he can do it from max fisher range so yeah after you've picked up the octarine honestly you can go a plethora of items i think refresher is pretty reasonable it's quite hilarious how long you can stun people once you have octarine refresher on earthshaker it's literally so dumb you can actually chain stun someone for like 10 seconds, if not more, if you do it correctly. Yeah, it's a real thing. Just go try it out. Next up on the list is Alchemist. Guys, I've been hyping this hero up, you know? I've been I've been mad hyping out. This hero is mad good. On top of that, he helped me win a DPC game. Unfortunately, we still ended up losing the series. Ah, what a bummer, you know? <laughs> GG. But I think this hero is really, really, really strong. By the way, take Acid Spray at level 1, please. Please. The spell's broken. It's the new Gush, okay? Guess how, know how I say Gush is like the best spell in Dota? Now Acid Spray is that, alright? It's literally better than a Game Leap sub, and that's pretty hard to beat. So now, here's what you go, okay? So, in the laning stage, you want to keep it really simple. If your lane is going really well, you can actually just straight up rush a Battle Fury. I do recommend picking up Boots before you straight up rush it, uh, but you don't necessarily have to go Treads or Bracer if the lane is really, really easy. And honestly, you might be saying, Oh, but Elk, it's Elk, you're gonna do it to the lane. No, you're not. This hero is like good damage, good movement speed, 305 movement speed, good armor. It's like a really solid hero in the lane. And Acid Spray reduces armor by 4 at level 1. Most heroes don't have 4 armor. It puts them into negative armor. You're literally doing pure damage with your right clicks. Think about it. If you put someone in Acid and you stun them, they're going to get destroyed. They get destroyed. It's that simple. So keep that in mind in your laning stage. On top of that, you want to go Battle Fear, right? You're going to get a lot of HP regen and mana regen. Ever since they removed mana regen from your chem rage, you've had some mana sustain issues, but that's why Battle Fury is so good on Alk. It gives you all the mana sustain you need. Well, that's not true. You still need a couple clarities here and there. But yeah, it gives you a ton of mana regen and a lot of damage. It's also really good for fighting. After that, you're going to want to go Sanji and Yasha. The Sanji 
amps all of your healing, and it gives you a bit of movement speed and attack speed, prevents you from getting kited too hard. Then you want to go AC or BKB next. If you're going to get kited a lot, you know they have all magical damage, go BKB. If not, they're physical, you can go AC, just amp up that damage, save yourself as well. And if at any time you need a blink, buy a blink. If they have a lot of backliners you need to get on top of, such as a Drow or a Sniper or a Zeus, you know, you can pick up that blink, get to the backline. And then finally, to top it off, you buy Abyssal. And you should have all of these items by like minute 20, you know, like 26. You should have your first three items by minute like 18. Yeah, you heard that right. You want to have a Battle Fury, Sanjin Yasha, and a BKB by minute 18, 19. Yes. Some people get Battle Fury at that time. You want to get three items by that time. And yes, it's possible. If you're unable to do it, you have inefficiencies in your farming. Next up on the list is OD. The Outworld Destroyer. Wait, what is it now? Did they change it? Didn't they change it or something like that? Is it? What is it now? Outworld? Oh, it's Outworld Destroyer? Outworld Devourer? I don't know. But nonetheless, I'm not going to speak too much about this hero, but apparently some people don't know much about OD yet. Like, it's just one of the best flex heroes in Dota. If you've been following DPC, it's like first phase pick ban a lot. And uh, yeah, it's because his numbers are so stupid. Who came up with this? This hero, it's so funny. It went from like 30% win rate, 30% win rate. It was actually the worst hero in Dota by a long shot. Like, literally, OD was worse than pro guides. How is that even possible? I, I have no idea, but it, it, it was a thing. Now, OD is up there with the gods like gamely. I mean, cr crazy, right? One of the best heroes in Dota. Why? It's just, it's just straight up insane. When you get a Meteor Hammer, you actually solo kill people. At level 1, you have 335 movement speed. You're somehow, like, just as fast as, like, Kotal. He's on a horse! How is OD almost faster than him? It makes no sense. On top of that, you have, like, 8 million armor and a million damage. And then you take your Q, and you also do even more damage. But yeah, when you get the Meteor Hammer, it really is just a perfect item for OD. Uh, for so many reasons. It lets you farm. Your hero's farming issues it lets you farm. Uh, it has some, like, early game killing issues, lockdown issues. It gives you that, Astral and the Meteor Hammer. Your hero has sustain issues. You get a Ring of Health. Like, you literally have no way to lifesteal or heal. Okay, you buy a Ring of Health. Uh, you need some stats to stay alive. Makes it a little tanky. It just does everything. So, I really don't think there's another item that can compete with, uh, with the Meteor Hammer. And then after that, you have a lot of options. Some people go Aether Lens. They just want to, like, chill in the back and Astral people and Meteor Hammer combo them from a mile away. Um, I've seen some Ags, early Ags as well. Aether Lens into Ags. You just Astral people a million times. It builds up your mana, and how OD currently works is your damage is based on your max mana. So the amount of mana you have, you do damage based on that, right? And so the more mana items you have, Aether Lens, a lot of mana, Ags, a lot of mana. You steal more mana with your Ags because you, you get two Astral Charges and it steals the enemy's mana. Hey, you get the point. You built up mana, you ulti, and you one-shot the enemy. Next up is Ricky. Talking about one-shotting, uh, Ricky with Battle Fury and Daedalus does a ton of one-shotting. Now, this hero does take a little bit of time to come online, but honestly, in your average pub, I don't see that as a major problem. You just gotta split push, learn to, like, really wait for your timings, and you're gonna pop off as Ricky. You pick up this Battle Fury into Ags, and, and you you hit two targets with your Tricks of the Trade. You also get increased cast range, and you hit two targets. And with that Battle Fury, that means you're cleaving off two targets as well. So not only are you gonna flash farm with Tricks of the Trade, you also just cleave people to death in team fights. If anybody groups up, right, if they group up, two, three, four heroes group up, Ricky can nearly team wipe them instantly when he gets his Daedalus. So here's the build. Battle Fury into Ags into Daedalus. Now you might be asking about small items. I think it's okay to buy Treads, Wan, Oof before the Battle Fury if you plan on fighting. If not, you can actually buy none of them. Yes, none of them. Maybe a stick if it's good for the lane. But you can buy none of them, including boots and rush battle fury. I've never been a fan of this, honestly, but really with Ricky, you can you're you're very mobile even without boots. So like you can sort of get away, kite in and out, and and avoid ganks without boots. It's still a bit awkward, but really the key to this hero is just to sit in the lane and get your battle fury as fast as humanly possible to snowball off that. And then yeah, once you go your eggs, you want to buy Daedalus, you're really gonna go pure damage. Some people will go BKB after the Daedalus or Manta, uh, even before the Daedalus. If they really feel like they're gonna die way too easily, maybe the enemy team just has like four silences or multiple roots. Like it's some underlord that you just can't deal with otherwise. And uh, so yeah, I, I really think Ricky with the Battle Fury Ags Daedalus is a build everybody has to try if they want to have fun. Speaking of fun, get your game leaps up. Next up, last but not least on the list, we have Orchid Rush on Storm. So if you guys have been watching Abed play Storm, EG is actually first phasing Storm. They're picking it, like let's say in your pubs, it's the equivalent of first picking it in pubs. They're first picking Storm in pubs. Yes, you heard that right. 
They think this hero loses very little lanes, which I actually think is true. Stormer just doesn't lose many lanes. And in the ones he does lose, you just jungle. Yeah, you just jungle. It's that simple. Just jungle. Just leave the lane jungle. At level 3, you can jungle. Now, if you're winning your lane, not only do you crush certain lanes, like certain melee heroes, you can really pop off against with your level 3 vortex. But you rush an orchid. So right now, orchid's, in my opinion, a great place. It's still very cheap. And here's the build. You go boots. You go bottle. Well, bottle first. You go bottle. You go knolls. You go boots. And then after that, you pick up two sages masks. And if you don't buy too many small items, which I don't recommend you buy, I don't recommend you buy raindrops or stick, just keep your, keep your inventory open. You want to have both of these Sages Masks. Remember, you're rushing Orchid. You need to get it as soon as possible, just like a Game Leap sub. You need to get your Orchid as soon as possible. And so, when you go the, too many small items, it really does hinder you on Storm. Now, there is the mentality in Dota where small items get you to your larger items. And that is true. But the thing is, the small items of Orchid are very beneficial. You buy two Sages Masks. You have so much mana regen, including your level 10 mana regen talent with your no mana regen as well. So you just have a ton of mana regen early into the game and you're going to get a potential Orchid at minute 11 to minute 12 if you're having a good game. And then you just kill everybody in the side lanes. When you pick up this Orchid, run to the side lanes, kill them. Also, you know how I said mana regen, mana regen, mana regen? You're going to get a lot of mana regen. What does Kaya do? It gives you mana regen amplification. So then you pick up a Kaya after your Orchid right, which goes into the Bloodstone, and then you have so much mana regen, as well as a good in pool and a ton of solo kill potential. Also, do not buy treads, just leave it at Brown Boots into Orchid, and you're going to find yourself being able to solo kill heroes like Jug, PA, constantly. You know, also, think about this, guys, okay? What do safe laners do in your typical 3-4k MMR pub? Maybe you don't know the answer. What do they do for the first 10-15 to 15 minutes? They just AFK in their lane, the large majority of them. They just do, especially if you go even lower than that, like 2-1k to 1K MMR. Uh, even like 500 MMR, you know, like people literally just AFK in their lane, you know? So uh, if you get your Orchid, walk to the safe lane and go kill them. Then after you do that, get a rune, get like a bounty, buy clarity. If you're completely out of mana, walk back to base and then just do it again. After you do it again, farm up the wave, kill some nearby camps, heal, do it again. And then you win because they have no farm. But yeah, that's going to be all for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace. But yeah, that's going to be about all, folks. Remember, click the link down below and subscribe to the Game Leap website where we have thousands of videos, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.